Hi guys, uh, welcome to a new video on the 23 Rides channel. Uh, today we have the Honda CB350 RS with us. We'll do a comprehensive test ride of the bike, tell you how much mileage it gives and areas where it struggles to address what the customers want from such a motorcycle. So first up, let's talk about the riding geometry of this bike. The riding geometry on the 350RS is little more aggressive than the highness. That is because of the fact that the foot pegs are a little rear set and the reach to the handlebar is a little longer. About 4mm extra reach is required to get to the handlebar. But I am not complaining. I mean, I prefer to ride bikes which allow you to keep your feet just below your body because that helps you tackle bad terrain very easily so overall for a guy who is like six feet tall like me i am finding the overall riding position very comfortable the back is straight the wrist the elbows the shoulder all feel pretty relaxed let's talk about how the seat is there is a right amount of cushion in the seat to keep you comfy while being a little stiff as well so that it doesn't compromise with the overall handling of the bike. From a touring perspective, if one is comfortable riding at speeds of about 90 and 100 all day long, this bike can do it. I also tried to ride this bike with a pillion at speeds like 80 and 90 kmph and max till 100 i was facing no issues at all there was no evident loss in power but if you just want to rocket up flyovers or inclines or go to the hills and expect you will go up mountains very easily without shifting gears then this isn't the bike for you the 30 newton meters of torque peaks out at the three three and a half thousand rpm range because of which you will always have to throttle this bike out in the lower gears when you're going up the mountains or clearing obstacles. All the tires with which the bike comes fitted with gives you a feel that you can take this bike off-road very easily. But the suspension setup is pretty hard. It can be adjusted, the rear suspension can be adjusted, but just to a little extent. The experience riding this bike off-road is not very confidence inspiring. The only thing that inspires confidence off-road is the lower seat height, which is at just 800 mm. So if you get into a situation where you get on bad roads, then you will not be struggling because of the high seat height and both your feet can easily touch the ground. It has 30 Newton meters of torque and 21 bhp of power, but still, I was trying this bike out on some off-road sections and going up obstacles, small obstacles, not big ones, small stones, it was taking a lot of effort. You could only hear the thump coming from the engine but the bike wasn't moving forward. So if you plan to take this bike to Ladakh, have your expectations set accordingly. Don't think that you're gonna cruise through every off-road patch very easily. It's gonna take some effort to throttle this thing out. See this, I am just going up a flyover and ascend on the expressway the, and the torque wave just ends pretty fast. Struggles to go above 90-95 quickly. It reaches 100 but slowly. Let's try and give this bike the beans now. I am in the fifth gear. Throttle is open completely and the bike is just ambling along. We are at 110 km per hour. The bike is trying to go past the 120 kmph mark but that's not happening quickly. It's taking time. Maybe it's just because of the crosswind on this road or what but 120 is a struggle to reach. The vibrations at 120, 121 kmph can be felt in the foot pegs 
and in the handlebar on the tank the vibrations are decent i would say manageable but there are vibrations this thing doesn't go beyond 120 at least on this day one thing that i am really impressed with is the braking performance doing 100 kmph right now and i'll just brake the bike comes with dual channel abs and just three pulls of the brake lever and we are at almost stand still no issues at all the single disc setup at the front and the back is very reliable something that inspires a lot of confidence easily sheds 100 kmph plus speeds the abs calibration is also pretty good i had to panic brake a couple of times and the abs didn't kick in at that time abs is not very intrusive that's a good thing and that is awesome calibration of the abs by honda and it only kicks in when you really press the brake brake lever very very hard one thing that really strikes me is how refined the machine feels in comparison to the royal enfield or any bike in this class the honda really feels very very refined the vibrations below 100 kmph are very manageable i won't say there are no vibrations at all just because of the thumper engine this bike comes with and the handling of the machine is also very good it is very easy to cut through traffic on this machine very nimble very sure footed you have the proper feel of the front end where it is going no vagueness at all it's just been 2 days and i kind of feel at home with this bike one more thing that works really well is the instrument cluster very easy to read in day or in night the smaller negative lcd display here with the analog speedometer works just fine has a couple of modes for trip a trip b total uh, odometer mileage gear shift indicator is integrated as well and so is the time with a 15 liter tank the fuel gauge is pretty accurate that's what i have seen so far which is something very uncommon in the 350 cc segment especially on royal enfield bikes so that is one good thing it comes with traction control you see that light there that shows the traction control is there and not to forget the awesome led headlight that the bike has has a very decent throw in the night very confidence inspiring and the dipper as well with that led bulb setup is pretty good same goes for the tail lamp as well a complete led setup on the tail lamp and the indicators are led as well so no cutting corners there from honda which is truly appreciated going through traffic bumper to bumper traffic on the barapula flyover in delhi and no issues at all the bike feels very light and this is kind of a real world agility test of this machine traffic doesn't get worse than this proper bumper to bumper traffic picking the bike up in second gear on an incline going up the flyover works absolutely fine the clutch is very light uh heat dissipation from the engine is very manageable i'm not wearing the proper riding pant right now just wearing a pair of jeans and can't feel that discomforting heat on my legs at all so with very well done honda for that let's talk about the service costs as well this bike comes with three free services that can be done in the first year the first one is done at 1000 kilometers or a month the second free service has to be done within 6 months of purchase and the third free service has to be done within 12 months so for the first year you are covered with the free services but those services are not 
completely free because you will be charged material cost no labor charges that is the free part there and these services cost about 1500 rupees and after the free service period ends that is after 365 days after the first one year of ownership the service cost of this machine is going to be in the range of about 2200 to 2300 rupees from a mileage standpoint this machine is pretty frugal as well it gives a mileage of about 33 34 kilometers per liter even when you are riding it pretty hard like the way that i am riding it today 100 plus kilometers on the highway and on normal roads uh, bumper to bumper traffic city traffic so in varied conditions 33 34 kmpl is quite a decent mileage one thing that has proven to be the biggest irritation with this machine is the layout of the buttons on the left side of the handlebar i mean who places a horn like this see this you have to move your left hand change the position of your left hand on the bar grip bring it here and then press the horn button the side where you press the button is towards the right it should be on the left side because it's on the left side of the handlebar isn't that obvious honda and now let's talk about the million dollar question a lot of people have asked me on instagram whether they should go for the royal enfield meteor 350 or the royal enfield bullet or this bike i would say if you want the macho feel the built like a gun feel if i may call it if i'm allowed to use that then go for the royal enfield offering meteor 350 or the standard 350 bullet whatever suits your bill but if you want something which is more practical more reliable lighter as well then the honda cb350 highness or the cb350 rs the machine that we are riding today both make pretty good sense at 1,96,000 x showroom the cb350 rs is 10,000 rupees expensive than the highness i personally think that the 10,000 rupee premium that is being charged on the rs is not completely justifiable although you get that bash plate and some blacked out treatment on the bike with the refreshed color scheme i don't think that is something that would kind of convince a lot of folks to invest that 10000 rupees but if you are looking for something which is more modern looking gives you that look of a scrambler mind you just the look and better and fatter looking tires because this one has the 150 rear section tire which is much broader than what you get on the highness then you can definitely consider this bike one thing that is really kind of uh, mind numbing for me is that honda has not provided the bluetooth module in the console which provides smartphone integration why they have done that i'm not very sure but this is one product that would appeal a lot more to the young generation who would want a bike that comes in those lively color options of yellow and red then this is something that you can definitely look at so that's it guys uh, we hope uh, this video would be helpful to you if you are out in the market and want to check out a 350cc motorcycle if you like this video you guys know what to do hit the like button share the video as much as you can and do subscribe to the 23 rides channel see you in the next one bye bye